Correct. Yeah. Now here we see your father and your grandfather, correct? That is correct. The way they do the scene here, it's like they my my dad and my grandfather go into a back or my grandfather's study there in the house where he examines my dad to see about the heart murmur. What what really happened was my dad went to my grandfather's medical office in downtown Mobile. A little bit of artistic license here. They they show that, that he still has the heart murmur. They show Sledge being really disappointed to find out that he cannot enlist in the Marine Corps. And in in real life, I mean that what well, there was some truth to that. But what really happened was when my grandfather examined him. When we will see it done this way later, but when he examined him, the heart murmur had had gone. I'm still, I'm still there. He's disappointed there. Yeah, actually, it, it, I'm just looking at. Uh, Linda Cropper played Mary Frank Sledge, my grandmother. I thought she did a fantastic job. And Colin Farrell, I believe, is the name of the gentleman who played my grandfather. I thought they both did a phenomenal job, you know, for just be given a role and playing somebody you never met or heard speak. I mean, the, the guy who played my grandfather nailed it. I remember my mom talking about it. She really liked him. She wasn't as crazy about the actress playing my grandmother, but in my mind, if you know my grandmother, I think that just means that she did a really good job of portraying my grandmother. <laughs> now, there is your uncle. My uncle Edward would have been graduating from the Citadel. And right right in this scene and in all scenes with him, you see a second armored patch on his shoulder. At that time, I told the creative team that he was in second armored. In fact... And I base that on the fact that there's a picture of him and my father after the war where he's got that second armored division patch where they were in their dress uniforms right after the war when they came home. In fact, he was in the 741st tank battalion throughout combat. And I guess second armored, he got absorbed into second armored right when the war was over, but he was 741st tank battalion through the war. And now we're seeing uh, my dad on his bike riding over to Sid Phillips house. Let me ask you this. The scene of your father riding away from your grandparents' home, how likely or how realistic or how accurate to your grandparents' home was that? Was there property like that? Did they have that big house? Was your grandparents' house still available? Could they have possibly shot the scene there? Um, I really wanted them to do that, Don. I hope you can see this. I'm trying to hold it where the glare doesn't just wash it out. That's a picture of Georgia Cottage on Spring Hill Avenue in Mobile. That That is a driveway I played in quite a bit as a child. I grew up going to that house many times. Uh, that is the house that Eugene and Edward Sledge grew up in. And that's the house they left to go off to war. You know, we don't own that home anymore. It's It's been out of our family since the mid-70s when my grandmother sold it. But I really wish they had been able to use it because I, I had so many fond memories of that house. It was just this grandiose, wonderful old um, mansion, really. But uh, surrounded by these, these huge oak trees that you saw. The house that they filmed in the Pacific to portray my grandparents' home uh, was actually in Australia. <laughs> makes sense because that's where they did most of the recording that, that they did a good job of, of replicating but you know they got the spanish moss and the trees and you know i heard it was just a massive effort and a lot of money on the production team's part to get huge quantities of spanish moss to put into the trees to look like that uh but no i don't look at that house and see any resemblance to my grandparents house okay but but their house was very large my grandfather was a doctor they were very well off so in that sense it's accurate and so the next scene we have your father walking with his childhood friend mr sid phillips who is basically telling him hey i've enlisted and i'm shipping off here shortly i'm on the 6 a.m train to atlanta I, I remember when they were going to film that scene of my dad riding over to sid's house on the bike bruce mckenna came up with that idea and was pretty excited about it because I remember he told my mom about it. Yeah, we're going to have Eugene ride over to Sid's house on his bike after the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. I, I remember my dad telling me he and my grandfather were actually 
in their Model A driving home from a hunting trip in Mississippi when they heard the news on the car radio uh, that the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. Maybe they mm. chose this as a way to kind of let the audience know of how close they were, not only in relationship, but in proximity. Hey, these guys were such close friends that they lived right down the street from one another. And so it was easy for him to ride his bike, maybe something along that, or they just needed a quick way to develop that conversation to get the point across. I think you're right, Don. I mean, <clears throat> they, they had to just, I'm Bruce was really excited when, when I told him, I remembered talking to my father about him and my grandfather bumping down in a, little back dirt road in the Model A coming home from a hunting trip here in the, you know, on a little car radio that, you know, the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. He thought it was pretty cool that I remembered that. I kind of wish he had, you know, that they had hewed to that when they filmed. But, you know, look, we, we've talked about scene compression and time compression and artist, you know, artistic license and composite. I mean, they have to do stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I kind of, I've learned through the years to, just accept what they did and, and go with it.